Back pass to high five is a great warm-up movement for shoulders and core. It's important to relax the elbows when passing the kettlebell around. Instead, use the momentum generated with your hips, abs and shoulders, not the arms. Stand up straight. Avoid sticking your chest out or slouching. Keep your shoulders back and down and brace your abdominals. Kettlebell training is all about controlling and harnessing momentum, so avoid dead passing. As the kettlebell moves around your hips, shift your center of mass as necessary. I recommend gripping the side of the handle and avoiding turning the kettlebell around as it passes behind your back. If you have tight shoulders, begin with a mobility warm-up and remember to stand up straight and avoid hunching. Avoid distractions when practicing this movement or any movement with a kettlebell for that matter. And remember to jump out of the way if you drop the kettlebell. Next level is figure eight to high five. Here, you drop the kettlebell between your legs and pass it to the other hand behind the opposite leg. Then you clean the kettlebell into high five, just like in the previous exercise. Same as in the back pass, you will hold onto the side of the handle and avoid turning the kettlebell around. Just like a swing, this movement is a hip hinge. Therefore, remember to keep your lower back straight at all times. Do not hunch and use your legs. Similar to kettlebell swings and deadlifts, we keep our neck neutral or in line with the spine. We avoid craning our head up when passing the bell. If you crane your head up at the bottom of the swing, your body will resist the hinge and go into a squat instead in order to protect your neck. That's why it's important to keep the neck neutral when you're hinging from the hips. At the end of the exercise, return the kettlebell safely to the ground as you would do after swings. Here is the front view. Notice that you need to straighten all the way at the top. Squeeze your glutes and keep your abs braced throughout to protect your lower back and create a better transfer of power from your hips to your upper body. Avoid the common mistake of putting the feet too wide. Instead, put them wide enough to pass the kettlebell between them comfortably. If you stand too wide, it reduces power, so unless it's specifically recommended by a coach, stand as narrow as you can get away with. Remember that this is a momentum-based movement, same as the clean, the snatch, or the swing. If you try to use a dead pass, you will get stuck. And lastly, just like the swing, it is a hip hinge, not a squat. Remember to use your hips.